This little guy here is the Sony 35mm f1.8 and could this be the best value full frame lens for the Sony system for hybrid shooters? Guys, I gotta tell you, I love this lens. Now, it is $750 in the US right now, which is not free, of course, and there are other 35 millimeters that you can get a little bit cheaper. There's one from Rokinon, there's one from Samyang, so you may wanna look there if you're on an ultra budget, but the thing for me is, this is the best combination of quality and functionality at a low price, in my opinion, if you're gonna do photo work and video work and just you hear me out on this one or you can watch the video I, I will give you examples now here what we have is this is a key for a Sony lens is uh, to have autofocus and manual focus switch when I uh, got my Sony a7 III I didn't realize how cumbersome it was gonna be to try to change from autofocus to manual focus very very quickly and so you're trying to get a shot the autofocus is not doing what you want. You want to switch it over. This little switch makes a huge difference. Right now, I am shooting on the Tamron 28 to 75, and this is a great lens, but it doesn't have that autofocus to manual focus switch, so I have to assign that to a button, and it's still a couple of clicks, and it just takes more time. I much prefer this right here. Prefer? Prefer. I prefer the manual autofocus switch and also has this little button right here and it's focus hold by default but you can customize it if you don't want it to be focus holds or like eye autofocus or something like that very handy to have on this lens at this price point point. and another huge selling point to this lens is that it is not huge it's actually my smallest sony full frame lens and that makes a big difference for me like i said i got that tamron zoom lens and that's not even considered a very big lens but it's so front heavy that i like to hold the camera in my hand as i'm shooting and walking around it's just what i like to do sue me and so the the camera it starts to tilt forward and as we know so especially their older generation it doesn't they don't have the greatest grips so I'm always I'm, my hand is in pain because I'm a sensitive boy so sometimes I don't even take my beautiful a7 III out to shoot I'll just I'll take something like my iPhone yuck am I right but this thing it when I put it on the camera it makes me want to use the camera it balances so well it's so compact it's so light and you go shooting around and also too you know I'm chasing my family around I'm shooting pictures of my kids and stuff when you got a big honking rig people look at you funny sometimes you don't want to be looked at funny sometimes you want to show up to set yeah with the giant red cinema camera so everybody thinks you're mr. impressive pants but sometimes you want to be subtle and that's another thing that makes this so great is it's nice and subtle nobody's gonna look at you funny when you take this thing out it's got a minimum focusing distance of 8.7 inches or 22 centimeters which is pretty good for a uh, 35 millimeter it's only 9.9 .9 ounces for you people in the United States for everyone else it's 281 grams and I really like what Sony is doing with their lenses lately that they're trying to find more compact lenses for people who are like me wusses you know they don't want to carry around big heavy gear I like it and it matches the Sony camera they've made their bodies small for so long it's about time we had a bunch of lenses that fit the bill am I right so now I think I've talked enough about this lens let's put it on the camera and see what happens you're looking at the 35 millimeter right now and I love this focal length for video a lot of people like 35 millimeter for film or video which is just a, it's a really good length especially for me here in the studio it's exactly what I would use I also use it out in the field 35 millimeters now I have this wide open at f 1.8 that's why the background is a little bit blurry that background is, is pretty close to me right there see I am touching the light right there so it's creating a decent separation for me from the background I forgot to turn on my little kicker light it's not a YouTube video unless I can get a hair light rimming me up like some kind of angel. Now here's the thing, a 35 millimeter with an F 1.8. That is really good on a Sony system because Sony is very good at autofocus. So even at the shallow depth of field of 1.8, the Sony is not going to lose focus on you. Now with this 35 millimeter, why I like this one so much is the focus breathing it doesn't really have it. Sometimes when you see if an object is coming closer, 
and then focus and then you go back, the screen will go in and out like it's breathing, like you know, like like your lungs. And even though Sony has a very expensive 35 millimeter, the 35 millimeter G Master lens, that has a lot of focus breathing. So if I was going in and out, the screen would be wobbling around, making you feel like you had vertigo. I don't want to do that to the audience, unless they're actually watching Vertigo. Great movie, Hitchcock. It also has a very silent focusing system, so if you have your microphone close to the lens, you're not going to hear any motors grinding around. And speaking of focus, if you do want to do manual focus, this lens is very good for that, because it has a linear focus ring. Some, some of the mirrorless cameras, when you're using the lenses, it's a focus by wire, so the faster you turn it, the more it'll focus. You know, this one it doesn't do that. It has the same amount of focus when you turn. You can repeat your focus pulls, in other words. So enough of the studio. Let's take the lens outside. And see right here, you can see, look at all that wonderful bokeh here. Bokeh? Bokeh. It looks, it looks so good. There's so much separation from the background. Look how the camera and the lens work together to keep me in focus. And once again, notice the lack of focus breathing. I just, for me, it is essential when it comes to video. It's just too distracting when the screen is wobbling in and out. Good sharpness on the lens, good color rendition. Very happy with the way this lens looks both in the studio and outside. So you've seen some of the video work for this lens. Let's go over to Lightroom and take a look at the photo capabilities. Okay, now we're in Lightroom and this is the Mona Lisa of pictures. I took this in my neighbor's yard. They have roses because they know how to not kill plants. And I took this, I think it is plenty sharp. People seem to say this lens, the one of the only drawbacks to it is that it is not quite as sharp as a $6 million G Master lens. And that may be true, but to my eyes, it is plenty sharp. And I think it does quite well. I don't see any kind of softness whatsoever. And uh, here is a more beautiful look at this photography, guys. What a treat for the eyes, am I right? Look at this, and then uh, we zoom in here. We'll go in, look at this. Oh, lost it already. Look at this, it, it, I think that's wonderful. Wonderfully sharp. I'll fit it back on the screen. And uh, now this next picture is of my son. He is uh, saying that he is a zombie in this photo. And here you can see the chocolate stain that I have so wonderfully captured. That's the thing, you know, sharp enough to capture that chocolate stain right there. Now I will say about the lens, you definitely need to apply the corrections, the lens corrections. Here we'll go to the develop menu. And if you see, I have enable profile corrections on. And it's for the lens, of course, the 35 1.8. And if you take those off, you will see some pretty heavy vignetting and a little pin cushioning. So you just, you click that on and problem solved. Actually on a bunch of my photos, I actually did like the vignetting. I ended up putting it back, but you don't, you know, that's, it's not a positive to the lens to have vignetting uh, when you don't want it. So you just enable the lens correction. Just remember that, just uh, don't just zip them up to Instagram. And this is a picture of my kid again. Just, I, I like the orange ball. I just, it looked nice to me. And here is a picture of many children. Some of them are mine, some of them are not. I am not going to tell you which ones. They all are eating chocolate popsicles and uh, fudgicles, some people call them. And they made a uh, hell of a mess, a hell of a mess. But it went made for a pretty nice picture, I think, at least a nice memory. So this is the kind of quality you can expect on this lens and uh, for me I think it's great quality look at the look at the bokeh look at the nice bokeh it looks really really pleasing to me it's just that the, the background is out of focus it's not blotchy or strange looking I think it creates this one point and the, these are this one is wide open here at uh, 1.8 and I think it creates a very nice bokeh He's a little weirdo, isn't he? Bang for your buck. This is just the best lens I think that you can get if you're a hybrid shooter on the Sony system. With its image quality, its sharpness, its ability to focus fast, the size and weight of this thing, which makes you want 
to use it, and of course the focus breathing. Now if there's one drawback to this lens, it is that it has no image stabilization. So the Sonys aren't really known in their bodies for good image stabilization. The a7S III is pretty good, but not much else. And so you're uh, gonna wanna use this you know, on a gimbal or a tripod. And that's another thing. This thing is fantastic for gimbals because of its size and the way it balances the camera. You don't have this big honking lens on it. So great for gimbal work too. And of course, for me, I'm shooting it on a tripod almost all the time anyway. And when it comes to photos, the image stabilization in the body is good enough to take very sharp photos. So when it comes to native Sony lenses, I think there's only one lens that competes with the value of this one, and that is the Sony 85mm f1.8. Now that, as I say, not the best for hybrid shooters because you're not going to use an 85mm for a lot of video work. But in terms of portrait work, that 85 millimeter is a great value, at least in my opinion, and I'll show you in an upcoming video. So don't forget to subscribe to, to see content like that. Uh, hit the like button and uh, leave a comment. Tell me what your favorite lens is for Sony full frame. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Okay, bye-bye.